All right, guys, look what just showed up from Austria. These were the uh, offset mounting bars. I've been waiting to check these out since Computex. Super stoked about this one. So let's go see if this works as they claim it does and uh, what the benefits are. Welcome to Machines More. This is something I've been looking forward to. Yeah, it seems like it's a pretty simple thing, right? Just a couple metal bars. But I've been really looking forward to testing these out since uh, I saw them at uh, Computex just a few weeks ago. And Dan from Noctua gave us a really good overview of how these work. Um, let's just dig in and I'll show you. And by the way, big thanks to Noctua for sending us these so quickly uh, so we can test these out. We've got three sets here, the AMB14, the AMB15, and the AMB12. The AMB12 is for your 83 millimeter mounting pitch coolers, like your D15, the C14S, uh, D9L. And you have a north and south label for the orientation. The top goes like a U at the top, the bottom is a rectangle. And I'll test the D15 with these. The MB14 looks similar for a 78 millimeter mounting pitch here. Uh, there's only three coolers that use this one. You have the D12L, the L12S, and the L12 Ghost Edition. And I'll test the D12L with this one. So finally, the AMB15. Uh, this is gonna be for most of your U-type coolers, U12A, U12S, U9S. Noctua does have a list, complete list, so definitely double check that before ordering. So we will test. The U12A, the D12L, the D15, that way we can test out all three offset mounting solutions. So I'll show you how these work. We'll start with the just the uh, AMB15. I'll show you against the AMB11, which I have mounted here, yes. Uh, this is the Gigabyte B650 ITX board. And uh, we'll be reviewing this one, but we're gonna use this for this test here. And so this is the original uh, these are the original mounting bars that came with my U12A. And this is just one position, right? The other hole here is for AM3. So you've got it mounted here. The new ones give you two options, okay? So see in this zero position, you'll see it lines up here. But then if you want to go down, you'll see the minus seven position on the top of this bar. And so that'll go, it'll align it here. So it'll bring it down this right here, okay? So first, I'll, uh, let's just draw a line here and see where we are at the middle line. Handy dandy tool here, see where we are. Okay, so this line is basically, that's where the center line of the original one is. Okay, so that's with the original, we'll just label it Okay, so then let's put these, you'll see this one, we'll put that in the seven, minus seven position. I'll just pop these in first. AMB 15 is labeled uh, east and west, so that just means uh, left and right. And I'll show you what happens um, if you forget your geography and you know, mount it the wrong way. Okay. So let's do this. This is the correct one first. Correct. East, west, right, left, right. Um, I've got both at the minus seven position, okay? And so let's just take a look to see where we're lining up now, roughly speaking. I just wanna get an idea. Obviously we could just measure it. Okay, so. So you'll see, originally, you would have been right here, the, the center of your cooler, well, the, the, uh, where it, it mounts up here, would have lined up to the center here. And now, it lines up, it would line up here. So that does bring it a little bit lower, and that's uh, exactly seven millimeters from the measurement here. So the idea here is that instead of mounting it at the center of the CPU, it's gonna offset it 
seven millimeters, bringing it down better in line with where the chiplets are, where the, uh, that's the hotspot of, uh, of the Ryzen CPU. And that will optimize the, the coolers, the heat sinks placement. So it should have better uh, thermal transfer between the CPUs, IHS, and the heat sink. So this is, uh, this is U12A. It's overlapping the M.2 heatsink, and this heatsink is just barely clearing it. It clears this, uh, and it clears this heatsink. That's not always the case. These M.2 heatsinks on these mini ITX boards can be uh, pretty obnoxious these days, but this one at least, uh, I don't think you'll have any fitment issues. Some boards uh, have a lower socket, like an ASUS board, so you will have to be a little bit careful about that. Um, otherwise, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'll have an issue there. If you botched it completely and you mixed the east and west, you see this line ends up being right here, right? So it's going to be seven millimeters off the other direction. Okay, so that's uh, that's where it'll be. I'm not sure what that'll do if you install it this way, because uh, if it's not too much of a penalty, that actually opens up um, a different position. If you have some slight fitment issues, if you wanna adjust the position of the cooler, that gives you another option. So we will test that as well with the U12A. So let's do this. I will test this out. Uh, let's do the minus seven and the zero for, the, for all three coolers. And then I will, you know, show you the results, and then we'll have a quick discussion. It's just a quick test setup here in the NR200P. I'm going to keep the top panel off. I'm going to keep the bottom, um, the fans off, just because I want to isolate the effect of the mounting bars. I don't want the geometry, the actual placement of the cooler relative to the case fans to be an issue. Not that I think there's going to be, but just to eliminate that variable. So side panel off, top panel off. I've got the uh, thermal paste guard here. <laughs> this is like a huge time saver, also from Noctua. And 7700X here. All right, so I did wrap up all the testing. It took a little bit longer than I thought initially because the Gigabyte board had totally croaked between the two D15 tests. Uh, kind of disappointing, not off to a good start here with this board for the review. But it did switch boards to the MSI B650i and redid that test. Uh, for all tests, I did have the fans at 100%. Voltage is locked, panels are open. Since the D12L is a little bit weaker in terms of cooling power, I did reduce the voltage to just 1.25 volts instead of the 1.275 volts that I tested with uh, just to make sure it wouldn't throttle. U12A here with the AMB15. There's a difference. It's small, but it's consistent. And at equilibrium, it's about a 0.7 degree difference. So almost a degree. In their testing, Noctua claimed 2.8 degrees with the 7700X. I'm not quite there, but there is a definite small improvement here. So what happens if you flip them the other way, right? If you botch the install, what happens? Well, it's really bad. And I didn't even finish the test because I could tell it was going to throttle. and. Seriously, no one should ever do this. It's about a five degree swing the wrong way. So especially if you're installing this in a situation where the board might be upside down, like in an inverted build or sandwich style build, absolutely make sure that you put the bars on correctly or put them on when the board is, uh, you know, the right side up so you don't make a mistake, right? So next, D12L. Okay, so this one with the AMB14 interestingly gave no difference. Uh, with the dual towers, it often comes down to heat pipe placement, and if you have an opportune placement for the heat pipe right over the CCD, in theory, it could perform better. But look at this, and I purposely left the paste on the base plate just so you could see what happened here. Um, the cooler shifts down, right? So this, uh, this contact patch goes up, and perhaps that better aligns with the CCD with this uh, middle heat pipe here, right? Heat pipe number three. But look what happens. Now, 
the IHS isn't in contact with the part of the base plate that contains this last heat pipe here. And this one is now kind of marginal. So at least when it's centered, it touches at least a part of every single heat pipe. Uh, you know, it'll touch about half of the outer heat pipes. So six of one, half a dozen of the other. No difference whatsoever here with the D12L. And I guess that's fine too. You know, if you're using these bars, it gives you some fitment uh, flexibility here. If you need the clearance at the top of a mini ITX build, you can do that without penalty. So with the D15, I just ran a single fan because, you know, well, you don't really need two fans. Uh, but uh, it's a little tight here, so I just kept it simple just to get the, uh, the difference, right? And that test was by far the most significant, by far the biggest gap uh, in all these three, and that is uh, close to three degree gap. And it's interesting, right? Because with this dual tower, you have zero difference, and with the D15, there's a very significant 2.8 degree, almost, uh, you know, that three degree quoted gap here. And I would surmise that it comes down to the heat pipe placement. So you can see here with the D15, this is where that CCD would have lined up to with zero offset. So it's kind of roughly, you know, straddling these two. Moving it up seems to have a big difference um, going to this position with the minus seven. For some reason with the D15 is much more beneficial than with the D12L. You still kind of lose out on the contact with that last heat pipe here when you shift up, but uh, maybe because there's six heat pipes here instead of five, that direct contact with a single heat pipe isn't that big of a deal, whereas with the D12L, it, it, it's um, you know, a mitigating factor uh, when, you, when you shift it. With this cooler, because it's so wide, uh, and you probably won't have a problem like this with an ATX or MATX board, but the mini ITX board, you can see that gigabyte heatsink definitely did touch and scrape some paint off. Uh, not, it still fit, but you know, that's not ideal. And if you have a board with an even wider heatsink, that could be an issue. Uh, with an ASUS board, since the socket is already lower to begin with, and I don't know because I don't have a free ASUS ITX board to test with here, but it could get to a point where it would impede the fitment of the heatsink if it's a wide enough heatsink. So if you do have an ASUS board that's uh, free and you're, you're you know able to test it, please let me know. I am pretty curious uh, because I do have my ASUS X670E uh, tied up in the custom loop right now. And I actually had to pull the 7700X off of there for this test, but um, yeah. Uh, very curious about that. With uh, regard to all these mounting bars, you know, first do no harm, right? And in that respect, at least with D12L, there's no downside. And at the high end, you know, the upside, that three degree claim, it's definitely possible. So if, if you do have a cooler already, and if you're using one of the you know, X uh, Ryzen 7000 CPUs, I think it's easily worth the $5. Uh, you can order them with Noctua directly in that feed. It's basically paying for the shipping and handling to get them to you. And you can also get them from somewhere like Amazon. Same price, uh, I'll leave that linked. And just remember, much more money has been spent in pursuit of a degree. So this, not that bad of a deal, right? Um, is that difference meaningful? Well, if that's the three degrees that keeps your, you know, say 7700X from throttling when it's running on PBO, it's absolutely worth it, right? And it's absolutely meaningful. Uh, if you've right-sized your cooler already such that the CPU is already performing well at decent temps, well, you can lower your fan curves and keep those same temps. And just a few days ago, I had a video out talking about 100 more, uh, 140 millimeter fans. Uh, go ahead and check that out because go ahead and listen to the sound samples for the differences between the highest uh, tested noise level and that middle one. That test was with Ryzen 5000, but it's still the same idea, right? Because the gap there uh, between those two noise levels was a little less than two degrees. So with Ryzen 7000, you're mostly looking at the higher end of the RPM spectrum already. So a close to three degree gap 
you would be looking at a very significant reduction in fan noise if you wanted to just do it that way and keep even temps. So with this, I feel like perhaps the naming could be a little bit better. They're calling these offset mounting bars, but multi-position bars might be more appropriate because this also gives you the freedom to fine tune the placement of the cooler. And that can be also very helpful, such as in a build like the NR200, where the difference might be being able to place another case fan directly over your cooler. But seriously, kudos to Noctua for adding a feature to their coolers. They really didn't have to, but they did. And based on what Dan Carter told me at Computex, by the end of the year, all multi-socket coolers will come with the new mounting bars. So look forward to that as well. So I'll, we'll leave it at that. Simple, elegant solutions, love it. Please give a like, subscribe if you haven't already. I'll leave the product links down below and big thanks for watching.